Welcome back. Happy Monday to you. Welcome back to the drone footage, the combat footage show. Sorry. Uh, do me a favor, tap on the like button. Drop a comment. You know the, you know the drill. But we're back. Happy Monday to you. Hope you had a good weekend. <clears throat> a lot of footage time. Here we go. back what's going on let's check in a uh, little canada what's up happy monday newcastle welcome in where are you guys at washington oblasts <laughs> i don't know why that gets me every time but it does uh i miss hyperdrive we can make we can give hyperdrive a comeback Lithu lithuania plymouth oh, our word's gonna be tough tonight oh that sucks that sucks. Uh, who else we got? Egypt. Iceland. Welcome in. Alabama. Greenbow, Alabama. Uh, but welcome back. Um, for those of you that, uh, you know, used to wear BDUs, uh, the uh, top advice I can give you for today is to switch to Aleve. Aleve is your friend. I'll talk more about that over on the other stream later tonight. But happy Monday to you. Uh, tonight, I, I kind of, you know, tongue-in-cheek called the drone footage show. Uh, there's just a, a hefty portion of, at least even the start of tonight's stream is going to be drone footage. We will see some pretty wild stuff, and we're going to jump right into it. I uh, don't have any, you know, newsy type things to talk about. It's really just all going to be footage, and I, th I think we do have plenty of it. Some of it is going to be a little bit uh, thought-provoking. Um, we're going to talk about uh, Robotin again. <clears throat> it's still in the news because, you know, believe it or not, it's still contested to at least a certain extent. We're going to see footage to show that. Now, the thing to always remember with footage is we could very well be looking at footage that's a couple days old, right? Um, but a lot of back and forth as to whether or not Robotin is captured and also to the significance of Robotin. We'll see footage from uh, other areas. I didn't, I didn't pare the stream down tonight to just like three you know, cities, if you will, where we are going to follow at least some semblance of the forward line. In Ukraine, uh, I don't think we have a whole lot going on to, to from a combat footage perspective in Crimea, but you guys are also going to learn the importance of the fastball grip and how that might be able to save your life one day. But let's get started. Uh, we're going to go straight over to the map. Coming up for you guys now. We're going to actually be starting over in Hirson. Uh Technically, Oleshki. But it's still here's Snowblast. So we'll be starting in Oleshki with Russians setting up equipment on a rooftop. I don't remember where and where exactly in Oleshki. I do have exact coordinates for you guys. That's something I'm going to start doing in the stream description, uh, which I'll show you my notes here for just a moment. You'll see what I mean by the stream description. These are my notes. Uh, this is all I have prepared for the for, for each show. Just gives me a one-liner to remind me what it is. But if you check the stream description, you'll also see these. Now, you could take that and you can plug it into your Google Earth or whatever, you know, map you, you'd like to use. I don't think uh, lat-long coordinates work in deep state. And it'll give you the exact location. Anyway, this first one. Russians setting up equipment of some kind on a rooftop. Doesn't go well. Video's coming up for you guys now. There is music on the back side, gonna keep that off. Looks like some form of communications array equipment, something along those lines. Could be commo, could be electronic warfare oriented, uh, just the amount of dishes there. Would lead me to believe Kamo. Austin, thank you very much for the super chat, sir. Now, there's a little bit of a jump cut there. Jump cuts are always interesting. You know, I don't know how, how long before the inbound drone they actually did make it in, did make it inside, but they did. But they'll think twice before heading up to the roof again. Got another one from Oleshki. This one I do recall is in the west of Oleshki. It's going to be a mortar pit. 
120 millimeter mortar. Uh, I don't know the caliber of the mortar system. Let me not try and draw on my memory for this, but it is a Russian mortar system in Oleshki that gets hit. Once again, more drones. We've got drones. We'll see some helmet cam stuff in a little bit, some trench assaults. Um, the fastest Bradley that you've ever seen. Some pretty massive artillery strikes targeting Ukrainian positions along with 9M22S incendiaries. We've got some really interesting footage to see tonight. There's that hit. Let's bring it up. Now, this next one, I'm going to give you guys a discretion advised. This actually happens near Pidstepna. Pidstepni. Pidstepna. Pull that up on the map. Pidstepna. Pidstepni. There you are. We're going to go to Google Earth for this one. This happens somewhere in this vicinity here. I mean, and I'm giving you guys a discretion advice for this because what you're going to see is Russians in the back of kind of a soft top, uh, you know, troop transport, small troop transport. It's like a pickup truck with a canvas over top of it. Traveling along one of these roads. Don't recall which one of the roads specifically, but they also are targeted by a drone. That video is coming up for you guys now. Starting to get fast with the copy pasta. Bring it up. Shift it on the map again. We're going to see some Russian strikes here. This is going to be out to the east of Hirson, a little bit closer to Nova Kohovka, Nikolaivka. There you are. So these strikes are going to be, you know, somewhere near Mikolaivka here. And, you know, again, I've got, I've got exact grid cords for it, and we can dump those in here really quick. Give you something a little bit more exact than this. Always trying to improve and find ways that I can, you know, give you guys as much detail as possible. So this is going to be our target for Russia. And these are SU-34 strikes, two specifically. I want to say they're back-to-back. -back. Video is coming up uh, now. First one seemed like it was pretty dead on. Second strike looks like a little bit to the east, and I think the first strike is the source of the geocords that I had. JDAM? No, this would be, you know, a fab with um, the UMPK, I believe it is. The U. UMPK is what Russia calls kind of their analog of the JDAM. Paul, thank you for the 10. Was a shirt ever made of the Russian EW car? From Russia? I'll never forget that picture of that the little smart car with the Z on the side of it. Um, just watch that stream and now I want... You just watched that stream? That was, a, that was a while ago. Was that still in the last stream room? Were we still... We're headed back there, by the way. Uh, I've got to shift, lift and shift this studio and take it back to the old room. Um, but no, I don't. I don't think we ever did one. Uh, Parker, thank you very much for the twenty there. Uh, we, we're going to shift, you know, pretty quickly here. 
on the map. We're headed all the way over towards Piatti Hotkey. We haven't talked about Piatti Hotkey in a little bit. We'll use Google Earth to get there first. focused on this area here now let's head to deep state so you guys can see an update from the from a forward line perspective especially as we get into Zaporizhia we've talked a lot about Piatti Hotkey in the past Hello? doesn't really want to load but that's going to be in this area but we've got more Russian shelling here Coming up for you guys now. And again, um, you know, just kind of a reminder of what the Monday stream typically is. The Monday stream is typically footage that that came out over the weekend, right? So since Friday. So we, I, I normally only have about 48 hours worth of footage here. It's going to include more artillery strikes. It's going to going to include more drone footage. But this one specifically in Piatihatki is going to be uh, Russian artillery targeting Ukrainian positions. There you are. Now, I mentioned jump cuts earlier. We're going to talk a little bit about jump cuts on this one as well. Pay close attention to where the sun is hitting on... Uh, this house here. I thought this was just an interesting note from one of the commentators that, you know, provided some screenshots and a little bit of analysis. This is that same building. You can barely tell that it's there, but it's there. Note where the sun is now. It's kind of an entirely different timeline from where those, you know, troops entered that building. The sun is no longer hitting. So you're looking at a couple hours of difference. Bad motherfunker, thank you for the 200 THB. Thanks for the insight and entertainment. Of course, thanks for being here for it. All right, let's come back up. Now we're going to shift into a Roboten. And we'll talk for a second with... Uh, with Deep State Up. There's a lot of discussion right now as to the current state of Roboten. Right, as to whether or not it is truly captured, whether or not the the southern you know portion of Roboten is contested or not by Russia. We're going to see some footage tonight of a Bradley kind of Leroy Jenkinsing his way, their way, through Roboten all the way down to the southern end of it to engage. Now, the actual film date of that footage, I'm not certain. Uh, Pro-Russian sources say very specifically that they are still fighting in and around the southern area of Roboten. Uh, a lot of mainstream outlets and uh, pro-Ukrainian pro sources say that Roboten is now captured. Uh, it just is still a, in the information space, a contested area. From a significance perspective, I've talked about this before. It itself is, you know, another village liberated for Ukraine. So its significance uh, to Ukraine is not something that I can measure. I'm not Ukrainian. From a tactical significance perspective, uh, even then, I don't consider myself to be some kind of tactical guru. I can tell you that from an elevation perspective, it's not really all that much higher than Tokmak. There are those that say that that's the ultimate goal is to have some semblance of massive high ground over Tokmak. You're looking at, I want to say, 100 meters worth of elevation variance here. What it does provide is a little bit of a buffer uh, to allow some of your artillery to move a little bit forward. We talked about this on Friday. Uh, your artillery is not going to be sitting along your front line here. It's going to have a buffer off of the forward line, you know, trying to both stay out of range of the adversary's artillery whilst also staying in range of engaging, um, you know, or providing fire support to your forward line. So to, to a certain perspective, that provides them a little bit, uh, you know, forward movement on their artillery. 
their guns specifically because high mars can reach tuck mac uh, you know quite easily now there are some that are beginning to talk about the salient development here so a salient uh in you know its most basic term is used to describe a, a protrusion in the forward line that is surrounded on three sides which is what you're starting to see here when you end up with a breakout some have called the capture of Robotin a breakout, and it's not necessarily a breakout because that would, uh, the pace of that would be very fast. Uh, you would see essentially what you saw in Kharkiv, Russians just unassing their positions. A breakout would, you know, almost be disastrous here because that salient would further develop, um, exposing quite a bit of those you know flanks to, generally speaking to russia some are just starting to talk about this salient i'm not going to you know, try and armchair quarterback that too much but it is something that i think should be paid attention to and i have the assumption that um smarter minds than i are paying attention to it but let's take a look at that bradley footage it's coming up for you guys now again the fastest bradley you've ever seen Difficult to see, but I'll try and walk you through it once once the drone operator starts or stops having a seizure here. Morat, thank you very much for the twenty, sir. So this is the southern end of Robotin here. I don't know if that is Russian artillery or Ukrainian artillery, just given the amount of um given the distance that this Bradley moves, you know, coming from all the way at the north of Roboten to the south. There's a possibility that, you know, this is before Ukraine held Roboten. I'm not sure. This could be Russian artillery. Not certain. We will see that Bradley come in momentarily, though. Austin, thank you for the five. Here it is. I would assume it's Russian artillery if it's still impacting and the Bradley's cruising into there. And it's going to move all the way up and start engaging with the Bushmaster on this house here. Very far into Roboten. And there it goes. Now, when I first watched this, and I'm interested in your thoughts. It looked to me like they might be dropping off some dismounts here. They kind of paused their movement for a moment. And you can't tell. Uh, the, the quality of the footage is so poor. But I'm wondering if they potentially dropped off some dismounts. bring it up now on the western edge of the town the village I believe this is the western edge this Russian drone found its way home real Aaron thank you very much for hitting the member button I appreciate that and excuse me we're not on the western edge yet we're still on the eastern edge of town I got some footage coming up here in a minute from the western edge. Matter of fact, I'm going to pull the geo coordinates from this because I might be confusing myself. Before I give you wrong information, let's drop the geo cords in there. Let's take a look at where it takes us. Yeah, we were still on the eastern side of town here. Mm 
We do have some footage over in this area, though, to watch here coming up. This next video is Russian shelling of infantry, uh, probably, you know, within the same general area that we just looked that we just watched you know i haven't done a very good side by side of these two um then again everything kind of looks the same pretty much just blown up here's the video these are ukrainian dismounts moving into this building here So Bradley rolling in. And Russian artillery begins targeting those locations. You know, again, using the using the drone as a forward obs, ob, forward observer is the real novelty in this war. In fact, I want to say I want to say there was a statement from the U.S. that urged the Ukrainians to stop using their drones in a forward observation capacity and to use more traditional means of forward observation, uh, i.e., walk, walk up there. And for the life of me, I, I I really can't understand why you would want or need to do that with the capability provided by the drone. I'm not certain, but. On the western edge of town, more Russian shelling of Ukrainian infantry. So even though Ukraine does hold the town, the living ain't easy. Pontus, thank you for the 50. That statement was deemed Russian propaganda. Interesting. Okay. It has a basis, though. Right. This is something that I've talked about in the past. I narrated a I narrated uh, some feedback that was provided by a scout soldier from the from the 47th Brigade that trained with American Rangers. And one of the things that they were denied the ability to do was use their drones specifically. Now, one of the reasons for that is a the curriculum didn't allow for it. It was more of a basic training curriculum that we had sent the 47th to that was about to spearhead a counteroffensive. But B, they were also training in Germany. And in Germany, you have to have special permits just to fly a drone. So kind of a, 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 a there's a multifaceted reason there that they weren't allowed to use it. But first and foremost, the curriculum that we were training them to didn't allow for the use of drones. Let's move on, though. Uh, somewhere near Roboten, this one I don't have a geolocation source for. But the original source, uh, which I want to say was a pro-Russian, it is, uh, stated that it is from somewhere near Roboten. This is a Ukrainian vehicle that appears to hit a mine on the approaches. Chase, thank you for the five, sir. Now, the initial strike may have been a mine, and these follow-ups could be ATGM or um, artillery, maybe. Pretty precise to be artillery. Hey, Funker, how are you, buddy? Funker's in the chat, everybody. All right, we're not going to watch that one a second time through. Now, we're going to shift on the map again, though. We're going to move over to Makarivka, and I'm gonna, we're going to play a little bit of Funker Factor Fiction. Uh, I mean, nothing about the video is going to be fake. That's that's certain. But I have now seen four different geolocations for what we're about to watch. I have seen that it was Uroz, Urojain. Again, I don't think I'm pronouncing that properly. I've seen Urojain. I've seen in, in two other cities that I don't even know how to pronounce. Uh, what you're about to see is extremely heavy strikes 
from Russia on Ukrainian positions in Makarivka. Now, Makarivka is, you know, a part of that Eurozone front. We've talked about Makarivka before. Here. This is definitively the location of the footage that you're about to watch, and it is... That entire village is being blanketed by what appears to be cluster, potentially grad, and 9M22S incendiaries. You'll see the incendiaries, but I'll, I'll walk you through some of that while we're watching it. Makarivka. Russian strikes. From a scale perspective, it's important to understand the scale of each of those impacts. Those are house-sized explosions. And there in comes the Grad Launch 9M22S. Magnesium-based incendiary. Just blanketing the whole village. Well, today's the day. Today is not my birthday. Today is not my birthday. My birthday is Friday. I am not kidding. That is my birthday. Thank you very much for the 200 sec Pontus. Now, somebody somebody said that th these earlier strikes were grad. Um, possibly a submunition from a launched from a grad, but not your typical, you know, grad barrage. There are just the the impacts are too rapid. Uh, so you're looking at submunitions, and I don't know the specific rocket that it would be that comes from a grad. Um, you know, kind of an uh, almost an analog to the. Deep pick them that's fired from HIMARS, just you know, quite a bit less accurate. Now these, the you know, again, the 9M22S magnesium, those are launched from a grad, which is actually one of the things that allows Russia to have at least some level of plausible deniability, you know, related to war crimes. The specific uh, convention is the Convention on Conventional, the Convention on Certain Conventional Munitions. We've talked about it so much, but at this point, I've kind of flushed part of it. Convention on Certain Conventional Munitions, I believe, is what regulates the use of incendiaries. Um, you know, people typically just throw out the the standard Geneva Convention, but you know, the Geneva Convention is a series of protocols and conventions that regulate different aspects to war. There are different conventions and protocols for different parts of war. Uh, the specific one that would regulate the use of incendiaries would be the Convention on Certain Conventional Weapons. I don't remember which article it is, but effectively there's a loophole in the Convention on Certain Conventional Weapons that allows you to use incendiaries as long as they are against military targets and you put in, I don't remember the language, but effectively effort in minimizing civilian casualties and as long as they are fired from ground-based systems. You cannot use napalm, for example. That would be an incendiary that is dropped by air. All right. We're heading, we're going to be shifting on our map once again. Now, again, there, there's, I just want to go back and, and kind of drive a point home there, though. You have to be able to articulate, subject to being held accountable, that you did the diligence to minimize civilian casualties. You can't just willy-nilly fire these, fire these things into... I don't know, major population centers under the guise that some military might be there. Can't do that. Okay. Staro Mlinivka. Nailed it. We've got more Russian cluster munitions. I'll show you guys that on the map here in just a second. These are Depikum from Ukrainians.
No one's going to The Hague. Yeah, words matter. That's kind of why I said as long as you're being held accountable. Accountability. Now, the initial report said something, you know, akin to volley here. And that explosion is about a way, way inside of this little square set of trees here. The impact of the cluster munition is pretty far outside of it. Now, there is a primary fragmentation of depicum of each submunition. We talked about that on Friday as well. Whether or not it reached all the way into there, though, you know, that's, that's interesting. Time Lord, that's, yeah, kind of what I was getting at. All right. Let's bring it up. Let me, uh, I'm going to run some coordinates on that one. Let's see where... Exactly that took place. Excuse me. Coordinates coming up. Right there. Bring things out. Stario Mlinivka. Stario. It's kind of a grand scheme here. Like I mentioned, the impact of that of that depicum is really way out here, from a distance perspective of where that you know burning thing was. I change this to let's do meters, about eighty-five meters away. Something else likely hit that, or there were follow-up shots of some kind. Doubtful that the depickum that hit way out here caused whatever blew up in here. Just my opinion. I'm not a I'm not an artillery guy. Feel free to correct me on it. I'll take that L. Let's move on the map. Red is a Krasnohorivka. Krasnohorivka. Move once again. Bong. In this specific location. Now we talked about Krasnohorivka before. But it was the mine here. So we've seen quite a bit of footage in and around this mine. We saw Russians take the mine. We saw Ukrainians push them out of the mine. We saw a prominent Russian military blogger get killed here by a uh, mortar round and then, you know, follow up with Depikum. So we've seen this area before. But what we're going to see here is a Russian strike targeting a Ukrainian ammo depot. We're going to see a couple of ammo depots uh, go up back to back. Big boom. I actually made an out loud noise with my stupid face the first time I watched this one. Yeah, one more time. Maybe I'll give you the music on this one. All right. Let's bring it up. Oh, no, no, no. We got to see the aftermath. 
Sorry, I slapped the mic. And it's gone. Dave's not here, man. But Ukraine delivered their own PP slap to the ammo storage. I'll show you where this is on the map momentarily. And it's gone. I don't know what that says. Let me give you a location for that, and we will watch. They're actually pretty close to each other. Looking at a big picture here. Right there. That was a Russian ammo depot. And for those wondering, the forward line, you know, the general, generally assessed control by Deep State. We can, we can flip-flop back and forth here. As a matter of fact. Belsky. is there and this is this is actually really really important for folks to understand when they see you know this red line there's not a wall of dudes you know standing there holding hands right this is assessed control area and it's going to ebb and flow off of this in some cases up to like a kilometer right you know there could be a a, a quick russian patrol that comes out to here comes back the same thing there could be a you know ukrainian team with a btr or something here and they could do a quick patrol down this way and then turn right around and come back this way this forward line is going to ebb and flow but those impacts weren't really all that far away from each other about 10 kilometers or so all, both of which happened at least probably within the last week to week and a half. Really impossible to know. That's kind of a dart to a dartboard thing. Unless I were to find the original upload to Telegram, look at the, the metadata of the video file itself, which might be a little too far down the rabbit hole to see when an ammunition dump was destroyed. But there are ways to do that. Now we're going to move to Bakhmut. Still fighting for Bakhmut. And we're going to see a bunch of helmet. This is where our helmet cam footage comes in. Uh, and it's primarily going to come from the third. So we'll see some tank stuff. Some assaults. But first, third separate assault brigade, tank stuff. No better way to describe it. I'm going to keep this sound off here. That way we can avoid any copyright problems. One of the biggest challenges with copyright... Close impact there. The biggest thing that I don't like about copyright claims is that I have to mute it. You know, I have to mute that section of the stream. And what happens when you mute a section of the stream is it takes away the live chat replay. And I really don't like doing that. I like the live chat to, to exist in you know, perpetuity forever.
We'll see a couple of the 3rd Brigade's videos in a row, and then we'll get a quick update on Klashivka. Is that auto loader? Big words from a guy in little shorts. Uh, my shorts are slightly longer today, so I could fit bigger words in them, Poncho. Are they still using bomb tanks? Uh, Sotoli Tober? Oh, that's funny. I get it. Sotoli Tober. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't seen a Russian V-bit in a while. So we've seen a couple T-50... One or two T-50 series tanks... We've seen MTLBs used as a V-bid, uh, but I haven't seen one since those. I want to say they've done it three, four, five times maybe. That V-bid was highly effective. There was one that did impact really close to the trench. The others uh, were stopped uh, pretty well short. You know, uh, they felt it at a minimum on each of them. Funker website just doesn't show it. Doesn't show what. VBIED, Vehicle Borne Improvised Explosive Device. What's the machine gun on these tanks? That should be like maybe a Dishka or a Cord, a 7.62 by 5.4R. Maybe. Somebody correct me on that. Might also be a PKTM. Not certain. All right. This is Ukrainian footage, right? Yes, correct. That was the third separate assault brigade. And we're going to see more from the third, potentially, but from a Russian perspective. I, the, and the reason I say potentially here. I have no idea where this is taking place, but I put it in the Bakhmut area because it was reported uh, by a pro-Russian account uh, stating that it was near Klashivka. Um, now, whether or not... I, I have no geolocation of this. And I also really kind of, you know, once again, did a dart to a dartboard here, just looked at the surroundings and said, that looks a lot like the area near Klashivka where the 3rd Assault Brigade has been fighting. I do know that this is, uh, I want to say, these are Ukrainian troops on the ground. That's the best that I can give you. Dishka's 12-7. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I got my calibers mixed up there. Thank you for it. Thank you for correcting me. It's twelve seven by one oh eight versus the ninety nine that you get with the with the fifty, right? I should have given you a discretion on this one. I apologize for not doing so. Bring it up. Um, I alluded to this next one in the title. I don't know what happened here. 
I don't. I know that. I do, I don't want it to happen to me. Um, it is two Russians on a four wheeler. That looks terrifying. Both are twelve seven right, but the the Russian twelve seven is a twelve seven by one oh eight versus the twelve seven by ninety nine that is you know what we know is the fifty cal. Show us a Bayraktar already? I haven't seen a Bay Bayraktar footage in 84 years. Yeah, I'm not sure what, what happened to this four-wheeler, but it is not supposed to look like that. All right, we're going to bring it up. We're going to move over to Klashivka. Klashivka is an, an area there, you know, just to the east of where we are, generally speaking. And I'll just pull up the direct coordinates here because I think I think these coordinates are, are important to note. Klashivka has been under assault by Ukraine for quite a while, relatively speaking. Yeah, there we are. And note kind of the distance into Klashivka that this fighting is taking place. Right, so we're going to swap back and forth between the two. It is still technically in the gray area. The forward line of troops that we're going to see here in a moment has the control area for Russia listed as, you know, right to the north of this Y intersection here. I want to say it's about there. Oh, we're already at Klashivka. Yeah, it's basically at the Y. Oh, just in front of it. So if you were to look at it, you know, almost side by side. This next bit of footage, what we're going to see is we're actually going to see the Safari. I want to say they're the Safari Assault Regiment. Some helmet cam footage of them assaulting, you know, in and around where our pin is dropped here. Show you that one. Coming up now. Ah, super. You know, the easiest way to clear a building is to put as many explosives inside of it as you can. Safest way. Пацаны, я бегу! Alright. Now flipping the coin over for a moment. Uh, this is reported to be from Klashivka. I don't have any uh, geolocation for it. This is reported to be Russian snipers operating in Klashivka.
Why not use Miklik? Stick around. We got some footage for you coming up. Real soon, actually. Got a bolt gun here. What gun is this? Not sure. Seems pretty short action, though. Is it a Mosin? A suppressed Mosin? I don't think so. All right. Let's bring it up. So that's what I had that was published, at least, over the weekend for our geolocatable footage. So this is that stuff specifically that, you know, I know at least down to the village where it takes place. And just like you guys saw under, you know, as many circumstances as possible, I'll try to actually have an exact location. Um, you know, and oftentimes, you know, I find that stuff just perusing, perusing Twitter. Right, we're going to see footage at the end of tonight's stream that if you're not following the Funker actual Twitter, you're going to be disappointed because they got to see this a full 24 hours ahead of this stream. Um, this next footage, I'm going to call a discretion advice here. I didn't get the chance to scrub this entirely, but we're, what we're going to see here are Ukrainians um, clearing Russian trenches. This is an, a section of the stream that I call the general Ukraine area. This is all footage from the war in Ukraine. I don't know exactly where it takes place, though. These are Ukrainians clearing what is reported to be Russian-held trenches. Hold on. The gunshots were nearly like perfectly synced to the music there, and I wanted to go back and listen to it. I have to keep, unfortunately, even though we have combat sound mixed in with the music here, I'm going to keep the sound off for this one. The stream got yeeted for me on my TV. Had to restart. It's weird. There's a lot of good context that comes from sound. You know, it's already, so combat footage is already an imperfect lens, right? It's two-dimensional. Uh, it's a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional world. But what you're also missing is, you know, your other senses. You're already missing smell. There is a smell. You know, taste. But when you're also missing sound, it just takes out that much more context. And, you know, again, this isn't me complaining about that we're getting we're getting you know speaking of lenses lenses into the largest war europe has seen in a long time and a lot of it it's me just kind of paying attention to things like that and trying to help you understand why i run the show the way that i do uh, i have to keep that stuff muted to keep us live right otherwise we'll get too many copyright strikes and claims and i've talked enough i've talked quite a bit about those i don't want to harp on them but if the fundamental focus and function of this show is to help, you know, folks kind of see through the 10 second clip that um, CNN or Fox News are gonna, going to show you, we want to provide as much context in that footage as possible. 
Um, somebody asked about Miklix earlier. We're going to see back-to-back -back footage of Miklix here. Mine clearing line charges. The first is going to be a UR-77. This is the Soviet analog to the uh, M58 that the U.S. uses. We're going to see the UR-77 here, and then we're going to see the M58. All right. Now, when the counteroffensive first started and Ukraine was kind of running head first into that wall, into the wall of mines that everybody was asking, why aren't they using Miklix? I don't know what you guys were paying attention to, but we, we've we've seen Miklix footage um, relatively persistently, uh, consistently, I should say. Uh, what I, Where I suspect there is... What the hell was that? Where I suspect there is something of a breakdown is what density of stock they actually have. This is going to be an M58, and they're going to double tap this tree line. It looks like they're trying to provide themselves. They're trying to pave their own road. You know, um, Russia will have pre-prepared, pre you know, avenues of advance that they want Ukraine to use uh, and find that artillery is already set up for. Well, what Ukraine is likely doing here is uh, saying, you know, F that I'm going to make my own road. Pre-sighted funnels. Great way to put it. Yeah. It's all Ukraine again? We went back and forth with, like... If you're, if you're just now showing up and you're late to the stream, that's not my fault. So that's the first... This would be an M58 here attached to the back of this, what looks like a Max Pro. And you can see the you can see the path that that cleared, and you can also see that they've used it out here as well. They're going to clear a second path right along the side of it. Why is he trying to please the trolls? It's not necessarily the person that types that. It's the person that just joined alongside of them um, that might be actually really interested in seeing, you know, multiple perspectives that I really make that comment for. I don't really give a shit what, you know, just to, you know, put it plainly, what people people say like that. You know, it's it's not that big of a deal. But what does matter to me is there are people in the pursuit of knowledge that will come here hoping to see footage from all perspectives, which we do absolutely, absolutely give you. I have my personal opinions and perspectives uh, on things. This is the combat footage show. You're going to see as much as, as much as I can show you, and sometimes it's going to be really hard to watch from any way that you look at it. But those people that are in pursuit of knowledge to come here and see all of that stuff, that's who that comment from me is targeting. All right, this one's actually, uh, you know, something of a big deal. This takes place somewhere in Luhansk. This is an electronic warfare asset that Ukraine was able to identify. And using precision munitions, able to take out. And more specifically, it's an RB636AM2. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paste that in the chat. That's a mouthful there.
Now, this is something to actually kind of kind of talk about, and I'm gonna I'm gonna catch a bunch of shit for this. But this is almost like body shots in boxing, right? It's not sexy, you know. Uh, it's it's leg kicks in MMA. It's not cool to see, but it's devastating, right? The targeting of electronic warfare capabilities, uh, taking out logistics and supply lines, you know, those strikes on railroad tracks. Those are the things that are going to provide you the capabilities necessary to leverage your own combat power. This type of targeting is what wins you wars. Yes, you do want to attrip forces as much as possible, right? You want to take out troops as much as you can. But if there are capabilities that the adversary is using against you, and we're going to see another example of this, a very new system worth like something like $200 million. It starts with a PE. I've got the note here in a second. Uh, taking out these, these capabilities that would otherwise prevent you from using yours. Those are, those are critical strikes. Um, all, I wrote for, all I wrote down for this one was somewhere in Zaporizhia. Oh. <laughs> well, here's the footage. Um, you're seeing a Ukrainian assault somewhere in Zaporizhia. And I mean, I'm just showing you the video. Bunch of bunch of Russians running away from that Ukrainian assault. Pontus, thank you for the 20, sir. I'd say get your coffee for five dollars. Won't do it any longer. Pancho, thank you very much for the five. bring it up now this is the strike specifically that i was speaking to you've got an electronic warfare asset and an over the horizon radar system that i want to say was only announced uh this june maybe last june but it's the predal e and the lear 2 now an over the horizon radar system is absolutely huge that's going to provide you the capability to see things long before they ever come into line of sight you know, you're effectively targeting the eyes of your adversary. These are Ukrainian strikes in Kherson on those two systems. The latter, um, the, the, the quote on the screen says it's worth like something like $200 million. Um, I didn't get a whole lot of time to research that. I can tell you that that right there that just impacted is uh, alternative warhead HIMARS, M30A1 just based on the impact pattern. Yeah, I didn't get a whole lot of time to research this. I don't know for certain that that's accurate. Just kind of going to caveat that. Juicy target. It is kind of a, you know, an interesting spot to park at your $200 million, if it is $200 million, um, you know, over the horizon radar system. All right, let's bring it up. Now, this next one's very not safe for work. More drone footage. Uh, earlier, we saw some footage of um, Russians in the back of a 
like a troop transport, some kind of like a small pickup truck with a canvas over the top. Um, and we're going to see a similar situation just from, from the other side of the coin here. Uh, Ukrainians moving into a dugout in a trench that they have, once again, firing up at the drone, doing what they can uh, to keep it from impacting their position. But alas, they were unsuccessful. So discretion advised. I would assume Russia also uses decoys. Yeah, the wacky, wavy, inflatable air defense system. Yep. You know, I, I'll say one thing. That guy held on till the last second trying to shoot that drone down. All right, now let's bring it up. We might, we're going to be closing up pretty early tonight, kind of powering through all the footage. We've got a couple of videos left. Um, I, I don't know what's going on here, guys. It's Chechens. They're in a, they're in a massive, massive firefight with um, something here. I didn't want, I didn't even want to show you this one. Do you know? Did you notice that he checks the camera here? Yep, there it is. Watch his watch his face. Yeah, we're still recording, bro. I want to check the main page. I do have one more video for you guys, but I want to check the main page. Oftentimes, we're right in where Josh is going to be blogging. I think we've covered most of this stuff. Ooh, I did want to show you guys this one. This is uh, this is an interesting paint job for a chopper. Check out this camo scheme. All right, let's bring it up. That's actually going to close us out before the last bit of footage that I have for tonight. Um, Eric, thank you very much again for the super chat. I do have one more video. Don't go anywhere. I promise you, you, you better not go. You're going to be super pissed that you missed the last video. Eric, thank you very much for the super chat. I appreciate it very much. Thanks for being here. You know, everything's imperfect. We just We just appreciate you being here. We try to show as many perspectives as possible and hope that you come to your own conclusions and, and, and have your own thoughts. And, you know, we're going to continue to do that. We've covered war since 2007 and we'll continue to do that uh, long after, you know, the war in Ukraine is over. We'll, we'll be continuing to cover footage from conflict, war, and use of force from around the globe. But I'm out of here. Thanks for hanging out with me a little bit. Watch this last video. It's going to teach you to use the the fast balls grip, fast ball grip, to potentially defend yourself. I'm going to head over to the other side of the stream, uh, where we'll hang out a little bit, maybe talk a little bit more. Um, I appreciate you. Uh, have a good night. Here you are. Именно это движение, тянущее, бьющее. И после этого, опять же, вы должны четко рассортировать и осуществить. Вот моя рука. О, куда должна выходить. Видите? И далее она выполняет свою функцию. При подходе спереди. То же самое. А, видите, движение. Именно это движение, тянущее, бьющее. И после этого, опять же, вы должны четко рассортировать и осуществить захват. Почувствовать. То же самое. А, видите движение? Именно это движение, тянущее, бьющее. И после этого, опять же, вы должны четко рассортировать.
и осуществить. Вот моя рука. О, куда должна выходить. Видите? И далее она выполняет. What's he, what's he doing with the finger, the finger thing for, though? Like, just finger. Я свою функцию. При подходе спереди. То же самое. А... He's got a handful, dude. Видите движение? Именно это движение, тянущее, бьющее. И после этого, опять же, вы должны четко рассортировать и осуществить захват. Почувствовать половые уровни. Противно. Oh, oh, okay, good night. I can't watch it again. Good night.